Hello, Nestor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you today? Mm. Very good. Good. That's yeah. nice to hear that. What did you do yesterday? Uh, did you stay at home? Did you go to watch the parades or did you participate no, at home? At home. Yeah. Okay. Did you do anything interesting, watching a movie or something? See, sí, see sí, the movie with family. Oh, excellent. Which movie? What kind of movie do you like? Uh, is it? It was a science fiction movie, a comedy movie, horror. Action movie. Action movie. Okay. Yeah. What what was the movie? What is the name of the movie? Uh, the Vin Diesel. Uh, oh, Vin Diesel. He has good yeah. movies. Se me ha el nombre. I haven't seen it, but I know he has very good movies. He's a, one of my favorite actors. That's a good actor. So nice that you enjoyed your uh, day off. <laughs> That's good. And we have Stanley here. How are you, Stanley? How are you, teacher? I'm fine. I'm ah, sorry. I'm fine. And you? Great. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. What about you? What was your day? What was your day like yesterday? How was uh, you? Good. I sleep. Oh, you sleep? Yes. You were sleeping the whole day? Yes. Oh, that's good. It is good to to take the rest when there is a chance. So that's good. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, well, uh, thank you for being on time. Uh, we're going to start today's class. I already sent the material in the WhatsApp group. It's basically the same, remember? Eh, recuerden, es básicamente lo mismo, pero pues algunas palabritas o pues frases pueden cambiar. Eh, de los eh, listening que voy a utilizar, entonces por eso siempre les mando el material que yo utilizo para que trabajen y todos trabajemos igual. Let me start sharing and let's see. Okay, so today we're going to start the section number two. The topic of the section is what do you do? So I know that can be like pretty easy for you on this topic. Uh, let me try this and close it. So, uh, give me one second, it's not responding. All right, so welcome to the class. The class is nice to see you. Okay. So this is uh, today's topic. We're going to start section number two. What do you do? And we're going to talk about the top six student part-time job uh, in the United States. Part-time job. Do you have a part-time job, Nestor? Do you have a part-time job, Douglas? Are you just listening in today? Do you have a part-time job or is it a full-time job? Is it full-time or part-time job? What kind of job do you have? Stanley? And it's the question, Stanley, what kind of job do you have? Do you have a part-time job or a full-time job? Full-time. 
Full-time. Full-time. Okay, you have a full-time job. All of you have a full-time job. Yeah, correct. Um, let's see. We have six top five part-time jobs in the United States. Number one. You see the number one here is usher. Usher. Number two, tutor. 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 Number three, team assistant. Team assistant. Number four, caregiver. Caregiver. Number five, server. Server. Number six, fitness instructor. Do you have any question about this vocabulary or is there any of them who is not um not really clear? What is usher? Usher is a las personas que trabajan en el cine acomodando a las personas. Ellos están a cargo de decirle en qué sala va a estar su película, a veces lo llevan a su asiento, o están ahí en caso de alguna pregunta o necesidad de los que llegan ahí, de los clientes. Esos son los ushers, acomodadores. En number four. En number four, el caregiver es como un nurse, es como un enfermero o enfermera. Esos son para darle cuidado a las personas que están enfermas, estar pendientes de si hay que ir a bañarlos, si hay que ir a darle sus medicamentos, sus comidas. Es un tipo de enfermero o enfermera. A caregiver. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? What is the difference with server? You see the number five? It says server. It's not sirviente or sirvienta. It's not that. <laughs> They're different. Server? What is that? Well, you know that there is a word which is waiter and waitress. Yeah, you know that occupation, right? Waiter or waitress. ¿Qué son ellos? Waiter. Camarero. Ajá, camarero, mesero. ¿Y waitress? Mesera. Camarero. Mesera. Camarero. Mesera. Digamos que waiter es mesero y waitress es mesera. Entonces, eso es como por si es masculino, waiter. Si es femenino, waitress. Y para ambos pueden utilizar server. Server. Ajá, that is the, the, es, esa es la cosa con la número 5, que es, puede ser para masculino o femenino, pueden decirle server. Ya si usted lo quiere decir por género, entonces waiter sería para masculino y waitress sería para femenino. Y para ambos puede decir server. Uh -huh. Ok, so... Uh, any other question about the vocabulary before we move on? Okay, so remember, usher, tutor, team assistant, caregiver, server, fitness instructor. Uh, so for you, which one do you think is difficult or which one of these are difficult part-time jobs for you? What's your opinion? What do you think? For me, well, I think that a caregiver has a difficult job, a caregiver, because it's a person's health. So you have to be checking on that person every single uh, minute. So you have to be checking on them. So I think it is a very, very difficult, the number four, caregiver. What about you? What do you think? Which ones are difficult? Thank you. 
What's your opinion? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Aren't they difficult? What do you think? Which one is the most difficult? Nobody? Mm -hmm. I think our gear. Okay, so you think caregiver is difficult? Uh huh. So yes, I agree with you. Caregiver is very difficult because it's the life or it's the health yeah. of a person. So yes, I agree with you. Thank you so much for giving us your opinion. Now well, we have the word power. In the word power, we have some more uh, jobs, vocabulary here. I'm going to make it bigger. Okay, so we have these words here, accountant, cashier, chef, dancer, flight attendant, musician, Pilot, receptionist, server, singer, <clears throat> tour guide, website designer, Any question about that vocabulary or the pronunciation itself? Mm, no question. No questions, okay. Thank you so much for confirming. So now uh, to complete this word map, we have to classify them into the categories that we have here. So we have office work, travel industry, food service, entertainment, or business. Mm -hmm. You can work from the PDF, remember you have it here. Okay. This is the PDF that I sent. Este es el PDF que les mandé. Recuerden que para trabajarlo desde su computadora, porque desde el celular se puede, pero creo que Tienen que tener un lector de PDF y es un poquito más difícil a veces por el teclado. Pero igual lo pueden descargar, lo mandé por WhatsApp, lo descargan en su computadora y luego lo pueden trabajar aquí. Solo basta con hacer clic en la T, aquí en la barra de herramientas, la T de texto. Y luego lo pueden modificar acá. So, for example, Office Work, ya tenemos un ejemplo en cada categoría. Office Work, Accountant, Travel Industry, Flight Attendant, food service, cashier, entertainment, business, we have dancer, uh, office work. Which of this one is another example of office work? Which one can we add? Maybe website designer? Yes, website designer is office work. So we have website designer. Okay, and we have there website designer. Mm -hmm. 
Perceptionist. Perceptionist, yes. Perceptionist. <clears throat> Fly a tender. Um, yum, 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 yum. Let's see. Fly a tender. Uh, yes, it is in the travel industry. Mm -hmm. Just a key in travel industry. Cashier. Uh, cashier is for food service. <laughs> I think that for office work, only those two. Now let's move to travel industry. In travel industry, we have a flight attendant. What right. else can we have? Pilot. Yes, pilot, of course. Thank you, pilot. Singer. And travel industry. No sé cómo se pronuncia la, la segunda palabra. Ah, oh, guide. Guide, tour guide. Ok, excelente. Tour guide, yes. Three. Now for food service. Chef. Yes, chef. Mm -hmm. Server. That's correct. Server. And that's it. Now for entertainment business. Musician. Yes, musician is in entertainment business. Musician. Mm -hmm. Finger. Finger, yes, correct. Finger, I'm sorry, I, I type it in the same. So, yes, singer, uh huh, musician, singer, I think that's it, yeah, we finished with all of them, and according to this, we have to add more jobs to each category, we have to add more jobs to each category, for example, for office work, what else can we add in office work? Office work, we have accountant, website designer, receptionist. What other comes to your mind? Any other that comes to your mind? Can be uh, manager. Secretary. I'm sorry? Secretary. Ah, yeah, excellent, the secretary. Yeah, excellent. Now let's add more to the travel industry. Oh. 
For the travel industry, we have flight attendant, pilot, tour guide. Can that be a driver? Yes. Can be a bus driver, a taxi driver. So we're going to just write driver. Uh huh. Okay, any other idea? Okay, so we have pilot tour guide driver. <clears throat> Which other can we add here? That we can add a travel agent to agente de viaje, un agente de viaje, travel agent. Now, what about food service? What can we add there? In food service, we have cashier, chef, server. Delivery. Ah, the delivery person, very important nowadays. <laughs> the delivery worker, uh-huh. Any other? Which other confirmant delivery, chef, server, cashier? What about uh, host? Do you know host? No? No. Okay, el host es la persona que está en la entrada del restaurante. Y que les da la bienvenida y que les dice que ya les van a atender. Ese es un host. Que sería como, bueno, les conocemos en español como el anfitrión. Ese es el host, el que le dice bienvenido a la pizza hut. ¿Cuánto van a hacer en su mesa? Ahorita los voy a ubicar. Y ya los ubican y le dicen que inmediatamente alguien va a llegar a tomarle su orden. Ese es el host. Ese están para ubicar a las personas, darles la bienvenida, etcétera. Ese es un host. Uh, now about entertainment business, dancer, musician, singer, what else can we add? Mm -hmm. Any idea what comes to your mind? Play player. Sorry? Soccer player. Yeah, soccer player with entertainment vision. A soccer player. Also uh Magician, un mago también, a magician can be also in for the entertainment business category, okay? 
continue adding more. But right now, let's see work and workplaces. In this one, we're going to be matching the pictures uh, with the vocabularies from A, B, and C. In A, we have the occupation. You can repeat at home. Salesperson. Mechanic. Carpenter. Reporter. Nurse. Then in part B, we have the activities according to the occupations. We have the activities, for example, um, first one in part B is builds houses. Builds houses. Cares for patients. Cares for patients. Write stories. Write stories. Cooks food. Cooks food. Fixes cars. Sells clothes. Sells clothes. In part C, we have the uh, workplace. In a restaurant, in a construction company, in a hospital. In a department store. For a newspaper. Okay, so any question about this vocabulary? No question. No question? No. Okay. If there are no questions, we can continue matching. And the matching, you match the occupation with the activity and the workplace. So okay. we have a salesperson sells clothes in a department store. And then remember that you can, if you are going to work from your um from your PDF, you can use the tools that you have here and you select here. And then we continue with a chef. What do you think about a chef? Cooks food. Okay, so we said a chef cooks food. In a restaurant. In a restaurant. Very good. A chef cooks food in a restaurant. Now, a mechanic. Uh, mechanic? Fixes cars. A mechanic, yes, fixes cars. In a garage. In a, In a garage. garage. Excellent. A garage es lo que conocemos también nosotros como un taller. Entonces, garage bien puede ser el lugar donde se guardan o también el lugar donde los reparan. Un taller, a garage. Okay. So, a mechanic fixes cars in a garage. Now, number, well, le, a carpenter. A carpenter? Build uh, house. Yes, a carpenter builds houses. Mm -hmm. For a construction company. Excellent, for a construction company. Now, a reporter. Reporter writes stories. Write. Excellent, writes stories. For a newspaper. newspaper. Great, for a newspaper. And the last one, a nurse. Cares for patients. Yes, a nurse cares for patients. In a, in a hospital. In a hospital. Great. Okay, now that we have completed this exercise, we have the conversation. Where do you work? Let me share my sound with you the audio okay. right. i'm going to play the recording for you to listen to the complete conversation after you listen i'll give you a chance to ask questions about vocabulary or converse or pronunciation and finally we're going to role play the conversation and practice a little bit more 
So listen the audio and then let's clarify questions. Unit two, what do you do? Page nine, exercise four, conversation. Where do you work? Part A, listen and practice. Where do you work, Andrea? I work at Thomas Cook Travel. Oh, really? What do you do there? I'm a guide. I take people on tours to countries in South America, like Peru. How interesting. Yeah, it's a great job. I really love it. And what do you do? Oh, I'm a student. I have a part-time job, too. Where do you work? In a fast food restaurant. Which restaurant? Hamburger Heaven. <laughs> Unit 2. What do you do? Do you have any question about the conversation, vocabulary, pronunciation? No. No? No. Okay, if there are no questions, I'm going to play the recording one more time and I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be stopping the conversation uh, after each person speaks so that you can repeat at home. And as always, we're going to do this with our microphones off so that um, we can avoid delays here. Ew. Page 9, Exercise 4, Conversation. Where do you work? Part A, Listen and Practice. Where do you work, Andrea? I work at Thomas Cook Travel. Oh, really? What do you do there? I'm a guide. I take people on tours to countries in South America, like Peru. How interesting. Yeah. It's a great job. I really love it. And what do you do? Oh, I'm a student. I have a part-time job, too. Where do you work? In a fast food restaurant. Which restaurant? Hamburger Heaven. Okay, volunteers to replay the conversation. Volunteers? Okay, I have Nestor. Uh, volunteer to practice with Nestor. All right, volunteer to practice with Nestor. Douglas, thank you. Okay, ready, Nestor and Douglas? You can start, Douglas. Okay. Thank you. I start. Okay. Where do you work, Nestor? I work at uh, Thomas Cook Travel. Oh, really? What do you do there? I am a guy. guy. I take people on tours to country in South America, like Peru. How interesting. Yeah. 
It's a great job. I really love it. Love it. Um, what do you do? Oh, I'm a student. I have a part-time job too. Where do you work? In a fast food restaurant. Which restaurant? Hamburger Heaven. Excellent. Very good. Just one thing, Nestor. You said I love it. Love it. So, está bien unirlo. Y después lo dijo otra vez, pero lo separó. But that's okay. So, you say it together. Love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, excellent. Remember, tienen que unir palabras. So, it can sound more natural. And you did it very good. Thank you so much, Nestor. And Douglas, thank you. You did a very good job as well. Do we have two more volunteers? Two more volunteers? No more volunteers? Okay, if there are no more volunteers, we can continue with the next part. This is a listening practice. Uh, just listen and then we have to answer these two questions. What does Jason do exactly? And the next question, how does he like his job? How does he like his job? Uh, remember that esta pregunta, how does he like his job? Se refiere a que tanto le gusta su trabajo. Mm -hmm. Si le parece interesante, si le parece aburrido, etc. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to listen and get this information. Uh, what does Jason do exactly and how does he like his job? Let's listen. Page nine, exercise four, part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What does Jason do exactly? How does he like his job? What do you do exactly? Do you make hamburgers? No, I don't. I'm a cashier. I just take orders. And what's it like there? Do you like your job? Sure, it's fun. And I get free hamburgers, too. Do you want to listen again, or you get the information that we need? Okay, so what does Jason do exactly? Do you want to listen one more time? Yes, please, one more time. Okay. Page nine, exercise four, part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What does Jason do exactly? How does he like his job? What do you do exactly? Do you make hamburgers? No, I don't. I'm a cashier. I just take orders. And what's it like there? Do you like your job? Sure, it's fun. And I get free hamburgers too. Page nine, exercise four, part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What does Jason do exactly? How does he like his job? What do you do exactly? Do you make hamburgers? No, I don't. I'm a cashier. I just take orders. And what's it like there? Do you like your job? Sure, it's fun. And I get free hamburgers too. Okay, volunteer. What does Jason do exactly? My cashier. Uh huh. He is a cashier. He takes cashier. order. Very good. How does he like his job? Divertido. Yeah, it's mm. fun. And what else besides being fun? Yeah, I conseguir hamburguesa gratis. Yeah, gets free. Burgers. Excellent. Very good. Nice to you get it. Sí, lo, 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 lo entendió. Excelente. Buena interpretación. But why in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> yes, excellent. Excellent job. 
All right, so as you can see here, the next part is the simple present WH questions and statements. Esto es lo que sigue como la, la, el, el fuerte, el tema gramatical. Entonces, aquí pues está ya el tema en sí, pero eh, en el material que les mandé, les agregué esta parte. Como a forma de review, eh, las WH questions en presente simple. Uh, remember, they start with, empiezan con una WH word. Esas WH words pueden ser who, when, what, where, why, y how. Así empiezan. Eh, me imagino que pues recuerdan el significado de estas palabras. Who es para preguntar. ¿Quién? ¿Quién? Exacto. ¿When? ¿Cuándo? ¿Cuándo? Ah, tiempo o cuándo, el día. What? ¿Qué o cuál? ¿Qué? Ajá. ¿Where? ¿Dónde? Lugar. ¿Dónde? Exacto. ¿Why? ¿Por qué? El por qué, la razón. ¿El how? ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo? ¿De qué forma? Ajá. How. Ok. Y así empiezan las WH questions que también se conocen como Information questions. Ajá, porque estas no las podemos responder con yes o con no. So you need to give the information. Y estamos practicándolas en presente simple. Por lo tanto, vamos a estar haciendo uso del auxiliar. Do, do or does. does. Remember that do va cuando el sujeto es I, you, we, or they. Y das lo utilizamos para he, she, she, it. it. Y el verbo se mantiene sin alteraciones en las preguntas, no alteramos el verbo. Porque el auxiliar hace la función de decirme qué tipo de persona es y qué tiempo estamos utilizando. Por eso no se modifican los verbos en la pregunta. ¿Any questions so far? No question. Good. Then, to practice this, we have this part. And, uh, well, we have to read the sentence. Tenemos que leer la oración y luego utilizando la palabra que tenemos acá. Por ejemplo, aquí tenemos where. Hacemos la pregunta de acuerdo a lo que está en la, en la oración. Por ejemplo, en la oración me dice... Thomas study English at college. Me está diciendo que Thomas, eh, Thomas estudia inglés en, en, en el college, en la universidad. Eh, college es como universidad. Eh, now, entonces la pregunta sería, where does Thomas study? Vamos a hacer la siguiente para tener un ejemplo más. It dice, her friend lives in London. ¿Cómo me quedaría la pregunta? Ya tengo la WH word. La WH word. Where does? That friend live. Where does? Voy a usar does. Luego acuérdense que va después del do o el does. Aquí, después del does, iría el sujeto. ¿Cuál es el sujeto? El sujeto es este, cabal, exacto, completito. Where does her friend? Uh, her friend. Her friend? Live. Live, yes. Where Live. does? Perdón, perdón, perdón. Ah, sí, sí, sí. <ríe> es que vi la tres, Susan Studies Mat. Ajá. Entonces, her friend lives in London. La pregunta sería, where does her friend live? Les voy a dar tiempo para que completen las demás y luego chequeamos. Recuerden que lo pueden hacer de donde les sea más fácil. Si este es su computadora, that's fine. If not, in your notebook, it's okay. Luego vamos a chequear en un momento.
finish or you need more time? Finish. Okay, so what do you have in number three? Number three is where does Eva live? Oh, that is um. It's number four, perdón. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, number three is what does Susan study? Excellent. What does Susan study? Study. Very good. Yes, excellent. What does Susan study? Yes, in Australia. And number three. What does Susan study? And who? What do you have with who? Who does Eva live? Está diciendo que Eva vive en Nueva York. Yeah. Y luego dice who. Ah. Eh, who? Yeah. Hmm? Who does someone live? Ah, uh, with who uh, tenemos es una excepción, digamos, no no aparece ahí, pero who um, like we don't know who if it is singular if it is plural. Con who hay una excepción, no se eh, utiliza el auxiliar, aunque sí lo puede utilizar si usted tiene idea de, de la persona. Pero el who, cuando yo pregunto quién, no sé si es un singular o si es un plural. Entonces con who no se utiliza el auxiliar. Uh -huh. Entonces... Live, New York. Ajá, who lives in New York. Ok, sí, ahí, ahí tenía dudas yo. Sí, muy bien, y por eso les pongo este material para que solventemos estas dudas. Who lives in New York. Porque si se fijan, aquí no está, no está ninguna con who, pero la tenemos acá en el who, porque podría ser, como aquí es Eva, pero podría ser dos personas, Eva y Susan, por ejemplo. Uh -huh. Entonces, por eso no, con who no utilizamos el tú ni el das, porque pues no se sabe who es quién o quiénes. Puede ser plural, puede ser singular. Entonces, con él no utilizamos el auxiliar. Es la única excepción. De ahí con los demás sí se utiliza. Ok. okay. Now, number five. When does your brother get up? Excellent. When does his brother get up? His brother ah, get up. Get up. Uh -huh. When does his brother get up? Number six. How does Mr. Brown get to work? Yes, excellent. How does Mr. Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, how does Mr. Brown get, to work? get to work? Excellent. Does Mr. Brown get to work? Good. What does the supermarket sell? Excellent. What does the supermarket sell. Mm -hmm. okay. What does the supermarket sell? Excellent. Number eight. Where do they usually travel on holiday? Usually travel on holiday. Where do they usually travel on holiday? Excellent. What does Richard teach? Uh-huh. What does Richard teach? 
teach. Excellent. What does Richard teach? Que enseña Richard? What does Richard teach? And number 10. Where, where does this bus go? Excellent. Esa es la respuesta. Where, where does this bus go? Bus go. Excellent. Where does this bus go? Ahorita se la escribo, nomás que esta cosa se me está descargando y ya. <laughs> Where does this bus go? Where does this bus go? Ok, that's nice. Así les tuvo que haber quedado. Where does this bus go? Well, todas estas ya tienen el signo de pregunta, así es que no era como que muy necesario agregarlo, pero sí. Bueno, así les debió de haber quedado el ejercicio. Y ahora sí ya vamos a, ya que hicimos este repaso, ya podemos escuchar el grammar focus. And, uh, yeah, so let me, ay, esto es ya repito. I want to, okay, I want to show you something. I have it here with me. Uh, can you see? Yes. Okay. I remember. Douglas, <laughs> this is you. Uh, this is Nelson, Roberto, Norma, Marvin, Edwin. <laughs> yeah, I just so, have it. Um, uh, do you remember? <laughs> Yes, I remember. Yeah, I still have it. <laughs> so say hi to all of them. Ahí les da saludos. Todavía tengo su fotito. So yes. <laughs> y gracias por el detalle. Todavía lo guardo. So okay. Yes. Let me continue with my background. And then, ay, que lo hice. Y sí, me acuerdo de la mayoría de los nombres de todos ustedes. So yes. And that's nice. And I'm happy to see you back here again, again, um, Douglas and Pedro. Los demás, pues, no los tuve allá presencial, pero, pues, me da gusto que, que sigan cada vez que se puede, ¿verdad? Que tomen la oportunidad de seguir aprendiendo, practicando. So that's fine. That's good. Now, to continue sharing, uh, my screen, I have... It's a pleasure, teacher. <laughs> okay. So I have... This, uh, the audio for this, so you can just listen para que escuchen nada más y pues vamos a continuar con lo que es el presente simple haciendo recordatorio de algunas reglas. Page 10, exercise 5, grammar focus. Simple present, WH questions and statements. What do you do? I'm a student. I have a part-time job too. Where do you work? I work at Hamburger Heaven. Where do you go to school? I go to the University of Texas. What does Andrea do? She's a guide. She takes people on tours. Where does she work? She works at Thomas Cook Travel. How does she like it? She loves it. I, you. Work. Take. Study, teach, do, go, have. He, she, works, takes, studies, teaches, does, goes, has. Okay, so what do you remember about the simple present? Esto es básicamente para recordar las reglas del presente simple. ¿Qué, qué recordamos? A veces, aparte de lo de las preguntas que ya vimos, que el auxiliar pues, depende de la persona y que el verbo lo dejamos en forma simple en el caso de las preguntas. ¿Y qué más recuerdan? Verbos en tercera persona se, eh, tendrán una terminación de 
es Ajá, excelente. Cuando hablamos de una tercera persona en singular, siempre es importante recordar que singular, eh, a la mayoría de los verbos se les agrega es, así como tenemos aquí, por ejemplo, eh, take. Eh, bueno, al ya terminar en es, solo se le agregó la s para he, she, or it takes. Eh, s nada más, eh, s en algunos casos. Y en algunos como study, que eh, eh, se, se altera, ¿verdad? Se le quita la y, se pone, se pone y latina, y se agrega es. Pero eso es en el caso de que antes de la y haya una consonante. consonante. En el caso de play, por ejemplo, play termina en y, pero antes de la y hay una vocal, Ajá. play. Entonces a ese solo se le agregan la S eh, para la tercera persona, solo place, place. place. Ajá. So, esa es la excepción con los que terminan en Y. Si antes de la Y hay una consonante, entonces se cambia la Y por Y latina y se agrega ES. Uh, vocal, o lo agregamos S, como en la mayoría de los verbos. Y pues están los irregulares como have, que cambia a has. Para la tercera persona. Y eso recordando que solo se hace cuando estamos haciendo oraciones afirmativas. ¿Por qué? Porque en oraciones afirmativas no hay auxiliar. Por eso en las, en las afirmativas sí tenemos que alterar el verbo cuando es tercera persona singular. Pero en las oraciones negativas usamos el... Doesn't. Doesn't. Ah, para hacer oraciones negativas, por ejemplo, si yo digo, yo no, yo no trabajo los fines de semana. I don't work no. on Saturday. Pe y si quiero decir, mi esposo no trabaja los sábados tampoco. So yo digo, my husband doesn't work on Saturdays either. Él tampoco trabaja los sábados. Entonces, eh, ahí es donde se hace la diferencia, ¿verdad? Eh, tercera persona, utilizamos el doesn't. Entonces, ya el auxiliar me está indicando la tercera persona. Por eso no alteramos el verbo. Ya no es necesario ponerle la S. También en las preguntas, ¿verdad? Porque en las preguntas se utiliza específicamente does para la tercera persona. Así es que eso sería. No sé si ese tema lo tienen bien claro o sienten aún que es difícil. Eh, pues si ese es el caso, si aún sienten que es difícil, podemos eh, profundizar más en el tema, agregarles más ejercicios del presente simple para practicar esas reglas. Ustedes me dicen. Quizás sería solo dar un pequeño refrescamiento, Ticho, porque si sí, hay cositas que se escapan. Ok, perfecto, Néstor. Lo vamos a, a tomar en cuenta y vamos a preparar más ejercicios para el presente simple. Ahorita voy a de, pasarme al material del uh, PDF porque ahí puedo digitar en el otro, ¿no? So, yes. Here we are. So, it says, uh, complete the conversations and then practice with a partner. Aquí vamos a estar practicando esto que acabamos de ver en el grammar focus, el present simple. And uh, yes, we have complete these conversations and then practice. So we have, what do you do? And then we say, I'm a full-time student. I studied the violin. Luego, para ir seguir completando, a veces es necesario leer más adelante. Por ejemplo, aquí, and... Do you to school? Y la respuesta dice, I to the New York School of Music. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que probablemente preguntaron? ¿Dónde está la escuela? Ajá, ¿en dónde vas a la escuela? Entonces, and, vamos a agregar el where, que sería para, where do you? Go. Go, ajá, where do Where do you go to school? Es como decir, ¿a dónde vas a estudiar? ¿A dónde vas a la escuela? Where do you go to school? I. Y ponemos el mismo verbo. I go to the news, to the New York School of Music. 
voy a la escuela de música de Nueva York. Wow. Y dice, do you like your classes? Y la What? respuesta fue, mm, them a lot. Mm. Mm. Aquí está. Para preguntarle a alguien que tanto le gusta algo, que tanto le gustan sus clases, ¿cómo es que le gustan? How do you like your class? Excelente. Aquí sería um, how how do you like your classes? ¿Cómo te gustan tus clases? ¿Qué tanto? ¿Cómo? A lot, mucho. Ellas mucho. Them a lot. I like. Excelente. I like them a lot. Me gustan mucho. I like them a lot. Okay. I like them a lot. I'll give you time for you to complete the number two. Ya completamos el, la conversación uno. Ahora les dejo tiempo para que completen la número dos ustedes.
Teacher? Yes? Finish? Finish. Aunque okay. todavía oh. una vida, pero la vamos a ver ahí. Okay, that's good. So, what do you have? Eh, una, dos. La primera sería, what does Tania? Yes, excellent. What does Tania do? Uh -huh, that is correct. Continue. She is a teacher. She has an art class. Mm, yeah, could be good. Podría ser una buena opción. She has. O um, podría ser she teaches. Como dice que es maestra. Podemos decir ella yeah. enseña. Ah. Uh -huh. So yes, she teaches. Yeah, she teaches an art class at a school in Denver, but has también podría ser una buena opción. Y lo importante que dijo has, conjugándolo a tercera persona, con el, uh, bueno, eso es irregular, how cambia a has. So that's good. Thank you so much. Continue, Nestor. What do you have the next part? And what about Brian? Where? Where does he work. Yes, exactly. Where does he work? He does. He work. He work. Works. Es el final. Yes, with S at the end. Excellent. He, he works. works. For a big computer, big computer company. company in San Francisco. Yes, excellent. He works for a big computer company in San Francisco. And he do ex, ex, exactly. What does he do exactly? Excellent. Exactly. What does he do exactly? That's correct. Okay. What does he do exactly? 
He's a website designer. He he's made a, a fantastic web. website. He's a website designer and he? Makes. Podría ser makes or diseña. Design. He yes. designed a fantastic website. Excellent. He designs. He designs fantastic websites. Mm -hmm. What does he do exactly? He's a website designer. He designs fantastic websites. Okay, so let's see. Let's practice that two conversation. Volunteers to practice conversation one. Anyone? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, we have Nestor and who wants to help Nestor? Vamos a leer las conversaciones, ¿verdad? Conversation one. So we have Nestor and who wants to help Nestor? Okay. I volunteer to help Nestor. Me, teacher. Thank you. Yes. Okay, you what are A. Ajá. Uh -huh. Pedro. ¿Quién comienza? Yo. Nestor. Dale. What do you do? I am a full-time student. I study the violin. And, and, yeah. And where do you go to school? I go to New York School of Music. Wow. How do you like your classes? I like them a lot. Okay. Okay, now you change, Pedro, you start. Uh, what, what does... <laughs> what does Tanya do? Fish, teacher, fish, teachers, uh, art class, and school in Denver. And what about Ryan? Where does he work? He works for a big computer company in San Francisco. What does he do exactly? His website, the singer. His designer. Designer. His designer, fantastic website. Okay, thank you. Great. Now, Design. um, design, uh -huh, like the designs. Nice. Yeah, designs. Designs, fantastic websites. Okay, I hear, I saw Stanley raise your hand. Stanley quería participar. I volunteer to help Stanley. Nestor. Your teacher. Okay. You start Stanley and Nestor Stanley. is going to be B. No, no sé si hay alguien más que quiere participar con Stanley. Me. Guillermo. Me escucha. Sí, yeah, sí. Guillermo, yes. Okay, yes, okay. Stanley, you start and Guillermo, you be. Okay. Number one. Two of what, oh, okay. What do you do? She's a teacher. She teacher and our class and a school in Denver. Uh, ¿Se pasó a la, a la dos? ¿O cómo? Ah, de la uno empezamos. Va, empecemos de nuevo. La, la uno okay, es. Okay. What do you do? I am a full time student and student the violin. And where do you go to school? I go to I go the New York School of Music. Wow. Of music. Wow. How do you like your class? I like things a lot. What does Tanya do? She is a teacher. She teaches uh, our class at a school in Denver. And what about Ryan? Where does he work? 
He worked for being in computing company in San Francisco. What does he do exactly? He was Westry, ¿cómo se pronuncia esa palabra? Dijo, website, teacher? website. Website, signer, he, the thing, infantry, west, sitter. Websites. Website. Yes, okay, let's review. Very good job. Thank you so much for participating. Let's review some words, like, for example, this. I, I'm. I'm, I'm a full-time mm -hmm. student. I'm a full-time student. Repeat. I'm a full-time student. Very good. And then the here is violin. Violin. I am uh -huh. student in violin. I, I studied the violin. I studied the violin. And let's see the other I heard. Is them. I like them a lot. I like I them, like them, them a, lot. a lot. I like them a lot. I like them a lot. Them, como con de. I like them a lot. I I like them a lot. And quiero ver next. It was like a computer company. Yeah, computer company. Computer hmm. computer company. company. Uh -huh. Computer, like uh, computer. computer company. Yes, computer, computer company. company. And then let's see website. 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 Design. Designer. 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 Uh huh. Fantastic mm -hmm. website designer. Website designer. Yes. Very website good. Designer. For the next exercise, which is in part B, we need to write what do we know about these jobs. En este ejercicio tienen que escribir qué es lo que saben de estos trabajos. Recuerden que como se está hablando en tercera persona, van a ir modificando el verbo agregándole S a la mayoría de ellos, o bueno, ES en algunos casos, etc. Por ejemplo, a reporter. Un reportero que hace works for a newspaper, interviews people and writes stories. Eh, vamos a hacer lo mismo con a flight attendant and a teacher. I'll give you time and then we're going to church.
Okay, what do you know about a flight attendant still? Volunteers to share?
A flight attendant, what do you have? What do you have, a flight attendant? For example, you could have written a flight attendant works for an airline. So you could have a flight attendant works for an airline. Any, any other sentence you may have? Attends to the passenger. Okay, let's change this for assist. Assist passenger. Passenger. Es un poquito uh, un confuso porque. Right report. Passenger. Right report. Uh, yes, can be good. They they write report, right report. About the flight, probably write reports about the flight, and there is Self a difference. When the, uh -huh. Self food and drinks. Yes, correct. Good. Now there is a difference when there is asistencia attend. Aquí se los voy a attend. Eh, nos puede confundir porque en español atender para nosotros es ayudar. Uh -huh. ayudar, etcétera, pero en inglés attend es de asistir, pero como de, por ejemplo, you attend to the meeting today. Ustedes asistieron presentes a la reunión. Ajá. Y por eso uh -huh. cuando tomamos lista de asistencia decimos attendance. We're going to check attendance. Eso es asistencia de, de presentarse. Por ejemplo, para una fiesta y queremos decir que Mucha gente asistió a la fiesta. A lot of people attend to the party. Eh, eso es asistencia de, de llegar a un lugar, de hacerse presente. Es attend. Ahora, si es de ayudarle a alguien, pa, um, darle un precio, llevarle la comida, servirle una botella de agua, lo que sea. Assist. Uh -huh. ¿Ah? That is, that's un poco confuso, pero uh -huh. assist passenger. So we complete this one. A flight attendant works for an airline, assist passenger, and write reports. Now, what about a teacher? What do you have for a teacher? Work for a school. Teacher a topic. For a school. Teachers topic says this. Oh, Teachers. Check the homework. Grade assisting men. Assigns assigns homework. Homework. Assigns homework. Helps uh, students. Sorry? Help students. <laughs> Yes, excellent. Help students. So, let us Prepare a new class. Hmm? Prepares the class. Yeah. Excellent. Uh -huh. Pass, pass, pass assistencia. Oh, checks attendance. Uh huh. Checks attendance. So, very good job. Now, um, the next is the biography exercise. En el siguiente es escribir alguna biografía. Aquí dice de los compañeros de clase. Use your notes from exercise five, but we don't have any notes. Uh, for example, said my partner. My partner is compañero o compañera. Is a student. Um, she lives near the university. She studies for a fashion design at the Fashion Institute. 
Her favorite class is history of design and she has a part-time job in a clothing store. She loves her job and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We are not going to write a biography about your classmate. Si se fijan, está en tercera persona. Esa es la idea de escribir una bi eh, biografía de una tercera persona. Entonces, lo vamos a hacer y puede ser, la biografía puede ser de su mamá, de su papá, de su esposa, de su esposo, de su hija, de su hijo, etc. Eh, eh, podemos lo decimos, my son is a, a engineer. He studies at the university. Um, he is um, he is going to graduate next year. He uh, he is currently he currently or nowadays he teaches math at the high school, and she loves engineering and. He loves her, his career, etc. So you write about a third person. It can be your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter. Write a short biography. Algo cortito. No es necesario que hagan algo muy grande. I'll give you time for you to write a biography. Try to be in a third person. De quien sea. Puede ser de su esposo, esposa, hijo, hija, etc. And similar to this, aquí tienen el ejemplo. Es una biografía corta, similar a esta. Recordando siempre utilizar las reglas para los verbos en tercera persona. She lives near the university. She studies fashion design, etc. I'll give it time and then you will share your biographies with the class.
Okay, finished. Finish. Okay, um, would you like to read your biography? Quieres que la lea? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, my friend is studying English. Uh, uh, eh, live, eh, ¿cómo se pronuncia? ¿Cómo vive? Live, live. My friend studies English. Ajá. Uh -huh. And then he live. or she lives. Lives, lives in San Salvador. Cor al He is 25 years old and is a quality auditor in Go the Gor He does. Okay. Así la hice de corta. No sé si oh, corta, but that's corta. okay. Yes, it's okay. Thank you so much for sharing, Guillermo. Okay. Anybody else would like to share? Eh, me preguntó algo. Oh, no, no, Guillermo. Thank you so much. No. Ah, okay. Okay. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, volunteer? Is there any other volunteer? Okay, if there are no more volunteers, we can continue in this part so that we can finish with this. Uh, with this class, we're going to practice this conversation. I start work at five. So we continue uh, talking about simple present activities. We're going to listen to this conversation and then you tell me if you have any uh, doubts in regards of vocabulary or pronunciation.
Page 11, Exercise 7, Conversation. I start work at 5. Part A, Listen and Practice. So, do you usually come to the gym in the morning? Yeah, I do. I usually come here at 10 o'clock. Really? What time do you go to work? Oh, I work in the afternoon. I start work at 5. Wow, that's late. When do you get home at night? I usually get home at midnight. Midnight? That is late. What do you do exactly? I'm a chef. I work at the Pink Elephant. That's my favorite restaurant. By the way, I'm Kevin. Okay, questions about the vocabulary? Or pronunciation? No questions? No questions. Okay. okay, so I'm going to ask for some volunteers to role play this conversation. I have Nestor, a volunteer to role play with Nestor. Me, teacher. You can start, Pedro, and then you continue, Nestor. Okay. Kevin, yo. So, do you usually come come to the gym in the morning? Yeah, I do. I usually come here at ten o'clock. Really? What time do you do work? Oh, I work in the afternoon. I start work at a five. Wow. That's late. When do you get home at night? I usually, usually get home at midnight. Midnight? That's it late. What do you do exactly? I am a chef. I work at the Pink Elephant. That's my favorite restaurant. By the way, I am Pedro. Excellent, just one word, only one that is always difficult is you, usually, remember, you usually. should. Yes, usually. Excellent. usually. Usually. Excellent, you That's got it, true. usually. You want to change? Okay. Yeah. You start, Nestor. So, do you usually come to the gym in the morning? Yeah, I do, I usually come here at 10. Really? What time do you go to work? Oh, I work in the afternoon. I start work at 5. Whoa. That's late. When do you get home? At night? I usually, I usually get home at midnight. Midnight. That is late. What do you do exactly? I chef. I work at the pink elephant. That's my favorite restaurant. Be the way. By the way. Okay. By the way. By the way. I am Kevin. Really good. That yeah, was you. really great. Thank you so much for participating and for role playing. You did it very good. Solo son algunas palabritas de repente, pero para eso no sirve la participación. 
y las videoconferencias. Eh, en la próxima clase, que sería el próximo viernes, seguimos con el resto de la conversación y podemos practicar un poquito más para refresh. Acuérdense de trabajar en la plataforma y cualquier duda, pregunta, cualquier ejercicio que necesiten ayuda, nomás escriban al chat del grupo y ahí les vamos a estar ayudando. Okay. That's going to be all for today. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon and see you next Friday. Okay, Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. You Take care. Bye. Bye.